We talked about probiotics, but let's talk about other supplements somebody with an autoimmune condition might want to include with all the dietary stuff we talked about before to ramp things up. Yeah. So um, I think, uh, you know, there are maybe four supplements we can talk about at a high level that I think are, are very important in autoimmune disease and chronic inflammation. One is vitamin D. So we know vitamin D is actually a hormone. It impacts not just your bone health, but your immune system, your um, inflammation levels, your brain health. So, um, and checking vitamin D levels is the, the only way to really know for sure whether you're getting enough. Because for some people, they need a much higher dose of vitamin D supplementation. Others can get it through sunlight or not take high doses. And as long as you're getting your vitamin D levels in a good range, um, that makes a big difference in autoimmunity. Um, second would be omega-3 status which can be measured with a blood test called the omega-3 index that is uh, through most labs. So you have two main kinds of fatty acids, omega-3s, which are anti-inflammatory, and omega-6, which is more pro-inflammatory. And omega-3s are found in fish, seafood, um, flax seeds, chia seeds, uh, a few foods like that. And um, so fish oil is something that is a, um, a good option if you're not able to get omega-3s because it really makes a big difference for the um, inflammation. Um, <clears throat> and then third, I think uh, I have to talk about curcumin because, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of turmeric, but um, curcumin is a form of it that is much more um, better absorbed. And uh, in that case, a yeah, supplement can really ensure that the turmeric is getting into the bloodstream, into the joints, or wherever uh, the tissue is you want it to work. Um, there are many forms of curcumin now that have multiple multiples, like better absorption, 100 times better absorption than regular turmeric. So that's where um, doing a curcumin supplement can be helpful. Uh, and then finally, uh, I'll mention glutathione because, uh, you know, just the most important antioxidant in the body it supports detoxification. We talked about how autoimmune patients tend to have low levels of glutathione. Um, and there's two forms of glutathione. There's a liposomal and reduced, both of which have been shown to be effective at raising um, intracellular glutathione. So liposomal is where the glutathione is packaged into a fat molecule called a liposome that is better absorbed. Um, and then reduced glutathione is a different form that is also uh, well absorbed. So other forms of glutathione don't get absorbed orally that well, but those are two forms that are good. And glutathione can be a really um, foundational supplement as well. That's great. And when it comes to the big four you just mentioned, are those ongoing or is it more something you'd want to include early on and then consider weaning off? Yeah, it you know it really depends. Uh, I think vitamin D is is the one that I believe is long term because uh, uh, it's hard. Usually, if you don't uh, if you stop taking for a while, the levels start to drop unless you're just getting tons of sunlight every day. Um, vitamin D, I believe, is really more of a long term supplement. Um, with fish oil, I think it can be great in the beginning to boost up your levels, and then hopefully you're increasing your intake of foods rich in omega threes like fish and flax seeds and chia seeds, and that will help maintain it so you don't necessarily need to be on it long term. Uh, curcumin and glutathione, I think those are both um, dependent on the practitioner. You know, maybe they're trying to bring down inflammation in the beginning or support detoxification can be great for upfront usage, but long term, you know, using turmeric, using spices, and then using foods to support your glutathione, like cruciferous vegetables and the beet greens from beetroot, uh, those are my favorite long term strategies. I totally agree with you on the vitamin D. That's something we need to continue to monitor and keep in that healthy range. Yes. I think this would be a good place to talk about adaptogens. You mentioned astragalus before. I believe that fits under that category. But what these are known for is modulating the immune system, which is the thesis of what we're talking about today. So how do you feel these have a role within treating autoimmunity? Absolutely. Um, so adaptogens are 
herbs that help your body adapt to stress. And some examples of them are ashwagandha, ginseng, um, rhodiola. Those are probably the three that I use the most often. Um, and ashwagandha is an Ayurvedic herb that um, also is anti-inflammatory, but um, is excellent for stress. It reduces anxiety. It's one of those few herbs that um, increases energy and also calms the person. So unlike caffeine, where you might feel wired or something like that, but it's calming and energizing at the same time. Uh, rhodiola is similar in, in property. That's a um, so, for example, ashwagandha should be avoided in people with hyperthyroidism because it stimulates the thyroid uh, in a good way if you have Hashimoto's or hypothyroidism, but can be um, problematic if you have hyperthyroidism. Um, rhodiola does not have that same issue, and it's a great alternative. Um, it's very good as well for mood, supports um in fact, some people use it as an antidepressant. Um, it really uplifts mood. And uh, and ginseng is another option as well, uh, especially if you're seeing a Chinese medicine practitioner, they often use ginseng as a, their adaptogen. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. What we often see in autoimmunity are certain parts of the immune system are hyperactive. You know, those are the attacking uh, the tissues, producing the autoantibodies, and other parts are actually suppressed, like the part that's supposed to.